Tobilk was established in 1860, which makes it the oldest winery in Victoria and one of the five oldest in Australia. My family's first involvement with Tobilk was back in 1875 when my great-grandfather's third cousin, James Purbrick, excavated the 1875 cellar, or as we call it, the new cellar. My great-grandfather, Reg Purbrick, purchased the property in 1925, but it was really my grandfather who studied law in England at Cambridge, but decided he didn't want to be a lawyer, he wanted to be a winemaker, and decided that Tobilk was going to be the place that he was going to test those skills. This particular cellar was built in 1875. Just looking at the, at the, at the ceiling, because all these bricks were burnt or sun-dried on the property in, oh, right. in 1875. Mm -hmm. There's no keystone, so the roof is all supporting itself. Oh, really? And there is no cement or mortar. There's nothing to glue it. Every brick is interlocked. Yeah. And it was done, we understand, in 12 weeks. The whole thing. It was governed by nature. It sounds absolutely ridiculous, but we had no refrigeration, no cooling. And then if it was cool, like, rather like it is now, mm -hmm. these lovely cool nights, it was automatic refrigeration. Mm. So how did it change when Dad started working here? Well, it, it changed there where there was more order because mm -hmm. he, he, none of us were trained. Yeah. He was the first trained man. Mm -hmm. He gradually uh, wanted to produce this order, wanted to change the style of wines, which his that grandfather talked well. him. <laughs> his grandfather was wonderful. The old man's thing was, oh, do you really? Yeah. And he'd take him down to, you know, to the, his little cellar yeah. down to there and they would have, he'd have a bottle of old wine, pour it. Yeah, what do you think of this old boy? Oh, that's great, Granddad. Why do you want to change? And eventually he, he didn't. He modified, mm. cleaned up, but never changed the tradition. It's a really interesting industry to be in and there's no doubt that you can't stand still. For us at Tobilk, part of that evolution has been the establishment of our uh, ecotourism uh, uh, operation, uh, which in essence has been the development of about a thousand acres of wetlands and wildlife reserve, which was opened in 2005 after 10 years development. Uh, all of that area has been revegetated and it's been a remarkable success. This particular wine is very special for us. Uh, it's made from Shiraz vines planted in 1860 and they're amongst the oldest Shiraz vines in the world. The yields though, because they're so old, are tiny. Uh, that helps make a really rich concentrated wine, but it doesn't give us a lot. It's got real power, but real finesse. Uh, and it's got some lovely spicy flavours uh, running around and some what I call thistle flavours. And it's made, as we make all our red wines, uh, where it's aged in the old oak downstairs. So it really does have a very clear expression of fruit uh, and fruit flavour. Uh, so it's got elegance, it's got sophistication, but still got the structure to be able to age and mature and will be at its best as a 30 or 40 year old wine. One of the really unique and different wines that we have here at Tobilk is the variety Marsan. We've got the oldest Marsan vines in the world here, which were planted in 1927, and we've got the largest single acreage of Marsan in the world with just under 100 acres. So it's got some really significant points of difference. We make it as an unoaked white wine, uh, and the really interesting thing about the variety is not only is it very attractive as a young wine, but it gets even more attractive with cellaring. I personally like drinking Marsan as a six to 10 year old wine when it's developed the wonderful toasty honeyed flavors. Uh, the middle palate's broadened out and it's just a really nice drink. And as it turns out, I've got one here. So I'll drink one with Haley, I think. <laughs>